okay so still we are in insert transformation and its application so this is our topic okay and uh, already we have uh, under this topic we have completed we have learned okay how to perform is a transform transformation and uh, the how to find the roc of the is transform okay then we have also learned that how to find a whole and zeros of a is transformed sequence okay and then uh, how to plot the whole zero plot okay and also we have uh, we have learned some properties of some important properties of this transform and i think also we have learned how to use them how to apply them okay in case uh, in case of we are analyzing uh, uh, system okay uh, so under these properties uh, we have mainly discussed linearity property fine shifting property and shifting property and we have learned about is the scaling property is a scaling property okay and also we have discussed about differentiation differentiation property differentiation property property uh, differentiation of is a domain no this is in is domain okay so these four properties we have discussed okay and i think uh, we still have to discuss another properties that is the convolution property convolution property convolution property okay this one we have to study it okay then uh, also we have to study okay we have, we have to study this one is still available and again we have to study how to perform is a transformation that means uh, uh, how to find the xn from from the z sequence okay so this is the inverse is a transformation okay so we have to learn this one okay i think uh, when uh, when at the starting point i have uh, i have told you a uh, very uh, wrong information i have given you a wrong information there i have said that this uh, inverse is a transformation is uh, not much important as i can remember i have told you that okay this I, I have told you that this is not much important okay actually i told that uh, things based on my experience okay i just use is a transform to uh, analyze a filter analyzing a filter actually that is a uh, uh, I think you may you may know that is called adaptive filter, Vina filter. Okay, uh, there I have to deal with only set transformation. Okay, uh, but I think uh, I feel that I am wrong. Okay, uh, this part is also very much important. Okay, very much important uh, when we are analyzing a system. Okay, when we are analyzing a system, this uh, to find the set transformation also very much important. So you have to learn this one also okay then finally you have to use you have to learn how to how to apply how to apply uh, how to apply this is a transformation techniques transformation techniques to analyze to analyze a system okay system most probably linear time invariant system okay lti system okay so still you have uh, three parts is still we have three parts to complete okay so this is uh, one property and how to perform the inverse is a transform then how to apply the is a transform to analyze a lti network okay so these three i hope uh, today we can cover all these things okay so we will uh, move on okay so first uh, we will see the convolution property so this also under the uh is that transformation property okay this is also under the is a transform property okay property okay so now we are going to see the convolution property convolution property okay <clears throat> i think that you can see me and you can hear me very well okay if you don't have any 
<clears throat> if you have an issue, you can uh, you can tell me. Okay. So for nullution property, I think uh, uh, already you know this about. Okay, because uh, we have used this for Fourier analysis. Okay, we have used this for Fourier analysis. Actually, for Fourier transform. Okay, Fourier transform. We use this uh, property to analyze the LTI system. We have already used them. Okay, so uh, the convolution property state that okay, if we have two signal, okay, if we have two signal x one n, x two n, okay, and if you get the Z transform of these two signal, let's say that it is x one capital Z, x two capital Z. Let's say that ROC is. Uh, the ROC for this signal is R1, the region 1. Okay, so this region is in Z plane. Okay, in this Z plane, so it is this any arbitrary region. Okay, so this is the Z plane, and there is an arbitrary region. Okay, so in that region, there are some complex values. Okay, so this means that for this complex value, for this complex numbers, okay, this uh, X1 Z will be converged. Okay, that is the idea. Don't think too much. Okay. So, if you uh, get the ROC for this signal, let's say that is R2. Okay. So, the convolution property status that stated that uh, we, if we get the convolution sum of these two signal x2n. Okay. So I think uh, you have performed the convolution sum, okay? So this is uh, somewhat complex, okay? This is somewhat complex. We can't do it in a straightforward manner. We have to, so here we will have two variable, okay? When we are going to uh, do the convolution property, we will convolution sum, we will have uh, two variable. So we have to take care of two variables and we have to see, uh, so what are the available uh, available uh, available range in both two variables okay so it is somewhat hard to perform okay uh, maybe when we are when we are uh, when we are uh, employing this uh, convolution sum when we are finding the convolution sum sometime we will uh, it is uh, it may have a high probability to make a mistake, okay? To have a mistake, okay? So, uh, if you get the convolution of that two signal, okay? So, in Z domain, it is just a multiplication, not the convolution sum, like this, okay? So, it is somewhat easy, okay? So, you have to, you have to get the multiplication only, okay, in Z domain. Okay, but in time domain, you have to, if you want to find the convolution for two, two signal, and if you convert, uh, so if you convert them to uh, Z transform, and if you get the Z transform, uh, you can just multiply them. Okay, so this will be the convolution property. Okay, and ROC will be most probably, okay, the interchange of R2. Okay, for example, if the R2 is like this, okay, R2 is like this, okay, so, so this is R1, okay, and this is R2, and you are, uh, for this signal, for this sequence, multiplied sequence, okay, the ROC will be the common part, this region, okay, most probably. Okay, sometime you will get uh, this uh, in a special case, sometime we will have some value here also, but uh, this one is this uh, this uh, intersection area is uh, surely we will have, okay. In most case, we will have only this intersection area, okay. So uh, that is the set transform convolution property actually, okay. Uh, so you can see that, uh, in, so say that uh, so we will see the uh, we will see the use of uh, this uh, convolution property uh, before that uh, uh, you can get the idea okay so say that we will we have uh, uh, 
uh, system. Okay, so this system may be a filter. It may be a filter. It may be a. <clears throat> it may be a. It may be amplifier. Okay, if it may be amplifier. It may be analog digital converter. Okay, so any uh, signal related uh, component. Okay, any signal related component or equipment. Okay, so this system is any uh, signal related component like filter, amplifier, analog digital converter, sampler, so on mixture. Okay, and also mixture. Okay, and coupler. Okay, so all these are uh, signal related component. Okay, so these are system. Okay, so uh, you know that uh, uh, for a system, you will have a input signal, okay. you will have an input signal, and uh, you will have some processing here. Okay, and you will get the output. Okay, the process output here. Okay, so the input will be a signal. And output will be a signal, and here you are doing some signal processing, okay, in this system, okay. So this is a system. Okay, for example, if you have a filter, uh, so let's say that it's a low pass filter. So if you send uh, send some frequency here, this just filter will block the high uh, frequency component and only output the low frequency component, okay. So here we are doing a signal processing. Okay, so this is the system actually. Okay, uh, so let's say that this is a linear time invariant system. This linear time invariant system. Okay, so if it is a linear time invariant system, okay, uh, so the response we uh, the characteristic response uh, we referred as HN. Okay, and also we called this impulse response. Can remember that impulse response. What is impulse response actually? Okay, so if you are given uh, impulse to this system, if you are given to impulse to this, this system, and the output, the output you get is the impulse response. Okay, this is the impulse response. Okay, so this one, this impulse response is used to characterize a system, a LTI system. Okay, so. If you are given an uh, input xn, okay, so your output yn will be xn convolved with uh, hn, okay. So, uh, so uh, this is the output of your system, okay, of your LTI system, okay. Please, uh, please, uh, keep remember that this is valid for LTI system, linear time invariant system, okay. So say now you have a system, you have a filter, amplify anything, and you know the chain. Okay, you know this. Okay, you you already have verified this. Okay, you already have verified this. Okay, so now you are given any signal, some signal here. Now you want to analyze what is the output. Okay, now you want to analyze what is the output, so that you have to you you know this signal also, and you know the impulse response. Then you can perform the uh, convolution sum, okay? Convolution sum, okay? So you, uh, as you can remember, that convolution will exist the uh, integration also, okay? The integration convolution uh, we get like this, okay? Uh, x n x n minus k, okay? Uh, in uh, convolution, you don't have. Uh, integration you have just a summation okay so this k from minus infinity to plus infinity so this will be your convolution no so here you have two variable k and n okay so you you have to both vary in and find the uh, available region okay then it is somewhat difficult to perform okay maybe i i can't remember the convolution equation okay so maybe uh, maybe this is uh, wrong okay don't uh, focus on it much more okay so this is y n x n h n what i want to tell you is that this is somewhat hard to perform this is somewhat hard okay so we can do like this okay 
So if you have a XN, okay, if you have XN and if you get the Z transform, okay, and if you have the impulse response, and if you get the Z transform of that impulse response, let's say it is HZ, okay, so you can simply add there, you can simply uh, multiply them, okay, so that is equal to YZ. That is equal to y is at x is at h is at okay. So this is the is a transform of x n. This is the is a transform of x. Sorry, h n. That is impulse response. This is this is the is a transform of in, input signal. Okay, and this will be your is a transform of this of your output signal. Okay, y n. Okay, then you can find the yn by getting the inverse is a transform. No? Okay. So you have y is at okay, y is at that is equal to x is at into h is at okay. Then you can if you perform the inverse is a transform, you can get the y. Okay. So likewise you can you can you can evaluate, you can find the output signal using the is at transform. Okay. So this, uh, so this will be simplify your uh, mathematical work, okay? So, uh, so you can see that uh, here, here for this one, also we need to perform the inverse uh, Fourier transform, okay? We need to perform the inverse inverse Fourier transform, okay? So inverse Fourier transform is also important, okay? So uh, we will do some numerical example related with this uh, uh, convolution properties. Okay. Uh, before that, we will do. We will begin our next topic. Okay. We will begin our next topic. Uh, next subtopic that is inverse is a transformation. Okay. So this will be our next subtopic okay so already uh, i have told you that uh, there is a formal expression to evaluate the uh, to evaluate the inverse is a transform okay so normally we uh, denote it like this x is a, okay then we will get x in okay so there is a, a common signal common uh, common uh, identity okay to evaluate the uh, inverse is a transform okay you have to do a contour uh, integration okay you have to do a contour integration and i think you have to get this set you have to get uh, multiplied by set minus n P is at okay. Then uh, here you have to divide it by one by. I can't remember. Let's switch it. Let's see it. Okay. So we will. Uh, so this is a note. Okay. So, so actually this is uh, this is the formal is a transformation uh, definition okay uh, inverse is a transformation definition so i think i'm wrong okay so this will be uh, exceeded so here you have to divide it by 2 pi j and you have to do the contour integration uh, uh, by x is at x n plus one no? It's like this. Okay. So, uh, okay, uh, n minus one, sorry, n minus one, x is at, is at n minus one, x is at, okay. So if I draw this, okay, so this is the formal way to evaluate the 
in no scissor transform to phi k, you have to do a contour integration. Okay, so that is x is at is at n minus one d is at. Okay, so this is this will be your formal uh, formal expression to evaluate the inno scissor transform. Okay, but the problem is that you have to do a contour integration. There you have to have a good knowledge about uh, complex variable. Okay. So you are doing this in complex domain. So you have you will you, you should have to have a good complex variable knowledge. Okay. Okay. Uh, so we will not be fo focusing on this method, okay, formal method, because it is somewhat mathematical. Okay. Uh, and I think uh, uh, we can uh, we can get the set transform uh, by looking at the signal. Okay, by looking at the signal. So we will learn how to get them. Okay, so that is very, very simple. Okay, uh, so we will uh, begin it with the example. Okay, okay. Um, so, uh, okay, we will begin it with the example. Then I will uh, tell you. Okay, so let me take example. Okay, let's say that you have a set transform. You have a set transform X is that. Okay. Uh, so this is somewhat like this, okay? One plus nine is at minus one plus two is at minus three plus let's say minus okay plus or minus anything okay minus is at so this is minus okay minus three so he, here is at plus five okay. So here we are given a set transform. Here we are given a set transform of a sequence. Okay. Uh, so can you find the extent? Can you can you estimate the extent? Or can can you give a try? Can you can, can you feel that? I think this is very important. You have to use the definition of the set transform. You no need to consider the definition of the uh, um, inverse is a, is a transform. So using the is a transform definition, no need to use the inverse is a transform definition. That means this one. Okay. You can do this by looking at this component. Okay. You can use the is a transform definition for this. That is is a minus n no. So this is how is a transform definition. This will be always a transform definition. Okay. So try to use this. Okay. Try to use this and from this try to evaluate the extent. I think it is uh, very simple. You can do it. Can you do it? Please give me some answer, one more two answer.
Uh, okay, I will do this. I got uh, many uh, many answers. Okay, uh, thank you for thank you for the answers, and we will see uh, how can how we can do this. Okay, uh, so so you can see that. Uh, so actually, uh, so if you write, so Xn is look like this, no? Xn is look like this. So if you write the formal uh, set transform, okay? So it will. Okay, it will be. sum n from minus infinity to plus infinity x n is at minus n okay so if i expand this we will get uh, this kind of uh, terms no so may, maybe let's see, start from minus 2 n is equal to minus 2 so you will have minus 2 x minus minus 2 okay plus x minus 1 and this is is that okay is that minus minus one plus x zero is that zero that is one okay and you have and you have uh, if x if n is equal to one you have x one is that minus one if x is two you have x two is at minus two so on. you will get this kind of terms no okay so you can see that this is a finite sequence this is a finite sequence okay this is a finite sequence so definitely we will have finite number of component okay so here also we will have finite number of component okay so if i write this in this form okay if i write this in this form okay this is x is at okay sorry this is x is at okay x is at this equal to this one okay so if i write this x is at also in this form okay so uh, so you can see here only a here only a constant okay here only a constant at that time is that should be zero so at that time n should be zero no okay so here for this term n should be zero n should be zero okay and for this term what happened this is minus one okay so here n should be one okay is that minus one n should be one okay the value of n okay and here n should be three and here what about this n should be minus five no so you will have is that minus minus five you will have plus five so here n should be minus five okay so these are the n numbers okay so if i write this using this method i will have x zero is at zero okay is at zero plus x uh, one is at one plus x three okay so I have this n0, n1, n3, n5, only five terms. One, two, three, four, only four terms. Okay. X3 is at uh, is this a minus one? Okay. And is at minus three. Okay. And I have x n is equal to minus five. That means n x minus five is at plus five. Okay. Okay. So this is uh, if I write this in terms of this. Okay, I will get this kind of uh, expression. No. Okay. So this is x zero. This is x one. X three. X five. Now you have this value. X zero is one. No. So this value is one. X zero is one, and x one is nine. Okay. X one is this nine. X three is two. This one two x minus 5 is 5 okay so other terms you will have zeros okay so so you will see that okay you will see that okay 
if I if I draw this, okay, if I draw this, okay, if I draw this, okay, so you will have, uh, so this will be minus, uh, sorry, this will be, this will be minus five, okay, this will be minus five, this will be minus five, okay. okay. So here you have minus five, minus five, sorry, minus, what is the value? Yeah, minus five, n, so this is n, okay? So here you have n is equal to minus five. Here, the value is equal to minus five also. This value also equal to minus five. And uh, minus four, minus three, minus two, minus one, all are zero. And x zero is one, no? Here, n zero is one, here. Okay, then we have, um, x1 okay x1 okay that means here one it is nine okay so we have a nine like this okay and we have x3 okay we have two is zero okay two is zero again okay? and we have we have x in uh, three okay three n is here so here zero one two okay so three is uh, two Okay, so here you have two. Okay, so this will be nine, this will be one, this will be minus five. Okay, so this is our uh, sequence. Okay, so uh, you can write this in terms of delta function. Okay, I can, I could see some, uh, some of you guys have sent uh, this like a delta function using this delta impulse. Okay, using the impulse, you can uh, write this uh, and also you can write it as a, uh, a sequence. Okay, so here you have minus five value. Okay, so that is minus five. Okay, so minus four is zero, three zero, minus two zero, minus one zero, but zero you will have one and you have to put that uh, uh, you, uh, the arrow here. You, you should put this arrow here, point in this arrow to the zero component, one. And you have one here, that is nine. You have two, again zero, three, you have two. Okay, so in this way also you can write your uh, session um, uh, sequence. So this is the time series. Okay, you can see that we have found the we have we have found the uh, set transform very simply. Uh, we have found the inverse set transform very simply using the set transform definition. No? Okay. We are just uh, analyzing it. Okay, so in this way you can find the is, is, is a trans inverse is a transformation. Okay, so uh, let me take another example. Uh, let's take example two. Okay, so we will have. Uh, let's say that uh, x is a is given as by one of is a minus one. Okay, so this is the is a transform. Okay, so can you find the x n? Okay, so can you find the x n? Please find the x n. So this uh, sequence. Okay, so here. So here you can see that we can expand this as a power series, okay? So we can expand this as a power series, okay? Um, so uh, power series, let me take, um, So, so it, I think you can remember that uh, this is somewhat like this x uh, one to, uh, sorry one by so one minus x huh, is equal to one x x 
x3, x4, up to infinity. Okay, so this is this uh, this is the power expansion, power series expansion. Okay, and to evaluate the Z transform, okay, you have to use this power series. Okay, so don't worry. Okay, uh, we you you no no need to keep remember this power series. Okay, you no need to keep remember. If you are, if you uh, require this power series to solve a problem in the exam, in the exam, we will be given it. Okay, we will be giving it to you. Okay, so can you use this result? Okay, and can you find the exam? Can you find the exam? Okay, so please take uh, five minutes as usual and try to do this. Try to find the exit. So, uh, meanwhile, you are trying this, I will try to find another example, okay? You can see your screen, no? so I am going to find another example while you are trying to do this question. So you can see the question. Is it on the screen? Is it visible for you? Okay, thank you. Please try take five minutes and try to, meanwhile I will try to find another example.
Okay, uh, so do you have any uh, uh, answers for this one? Okay, I think uh, this one also somewhat uh, simple, okay? Uh, so uh, you know that uh, we have given this uh, power series expansion, okay? That means we can simply we can simply uh, use this, okay? So using this power expansion, we have to expand this first, okay? So here we are going to uh, we are going to use our uh, definition for Z transform. We are not going to use the inverse definition. The inverse Z transform definition. We are going to use the tra Z transform definition. That is this one, okay? Infinity plus infinity. Okay, so we are going to use this one. Okay, so uh, so you can see that this is expansion. No? So here we have some terms. Okay, so uh, we should try to if we are given this kind of uh, compact compact uh, expression, first we should try to expand it like this. Okay, uh, for this. Also, we are given this time, uh, we are given a hint, okay? We are given a hint to use this time, uh, this power expansion, use this uh, geometric series or power series expansion, then we can uh, directly apply it, okay? So, uh, you know that, so this X is equal to this one, okay? So, I can write this X is at S, okay? One plus, okay, X. So this is the x, no? So this is the x. This whole term will be x, okay? So this term I can also write like this. So here is is it minus one? So I can write it as two is it? No? No, I think is it minus one is better, okay? So we will keep it as is it minus one. I think it is better, okay? Because uh, if you are going to write this in this format, sometimes we need minus sign, okay? So we will keep it like this, okay? So here you have one plus a, one plus x. So this is this will be your x, okay? So it is one 
is it minus okay plus x is square then you have to square this one and you have to square this one that is is it minus two okay plus this is x uh, x is uh, is uh, x to the power three that means you have to you have to x three minus one you have to power these whole terms okay by three okay that means that means you have to power this half by three and also you have to power z minus one by three so you will get z minus three and so on you will get half four z minus four so on so now it is very simple no very simple so so you can see that so uh, so compare it with this compare it with this okay so you can see that it is this is z minus n okay so this is z minus n so this will be our n so this will be n equal zero this will be n equal one this will be n equal two this will be n equal three this will be n equal four okay okay so this is the xn no this is the xn value so this will be x1 value this will be x2 value this will be x3 value okay so if i write this x1 x0 is equal to one okay x1 is equal to half x2 is equal to uh, half square x3 is equal to half three and what is x it x4 equal to half four then what is x in please tell me what is x in is x n yes x n is okay so you can see two half two three half three four half four okay then n it should be half n okay so this is the xn no? okay so now you can see that xn what is the range for xn so xn we can write like this n equals zero to plus infinity because here it is goes up to plus infinity okay half n no so what is the n range it is from zero to plus infinity so you can write it like this also half n to n correct so this will be your answer. Okay. Did you get it? Okay. So you can see that if we are given this kind of compact form, okay, first we have to look whether there is a power series expansion, and then we have to uh, we have to evaluate the extent by looking at the terms only okay actually this uh, method is called power series expansion method okay power series expansion method power series expansion method okay power series expansion method so let me give you another one more example quickly okay to demonstrate the power uh, series uh, example okay so this is uh, this kind of question will come okay to your exam also so this is example three okay so you will be given uh, this kind of uh, uh, example let's say that x is at is equal to x is at is equal to L n plus half is at minus n. Okay. L n and one plus half is at minus n. Okay. So you will be given this kind of uh, 
is a transform sequence. Okay. And uh, first, you have to uh, first you have to see whether there is a power series expansion for this kind of uh, this kind of uh, series. Okay. Actually, there is a power series expansion. Okay. Like this. So this kind of uh, question, this kind of uh, logarithmic uh, terms also we have a Taylor series expansion. Okay, so uh, you can see that uh, you no need to keep remember this. Okay, I also can't remember. Then uh, we can search Google it. Okay, so it is just like this. No, our Yes. Serious expansion. expansion. This one. Okay. So this is the standard power series expansion. Okay. So you can see that uh, we can automatically get. It. Okay. So that one also is x one minus x no. Go to that one. So there is no power series expansion for LN one plus one. No. We look. No, 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 we have no. So here we have a, a power series expansion. Okay. Uh, so that is called Newton Mercat Ross series. Okay. Anyway, so you have a power series expansion. Okay. So, uh, so normally, if you are asked to find this kind of uh, one, this will be given. Okay. In your uh, paper, this will be given. So let me write it in from one to infinity minus one. N minus one X N N. No, okay. So, uh, so you will be given this. Okay, so you will be given this. Okay, so uh, because normally we can't, uh, we no need to keep remember these kind of things. No, if we want them, we can and we can get uh, from Google or sometime we will have some tools. Okay, if you are doing real time engineering things. Okay. You no need to keep uh, everything, but uh, the only thing is you you should have an idea how to use them. Okay, uh, so so um, so we are given a hint like this. Okay, we are given a hint like this. Power series expansion for ln one plus x is equal to n one to infinity minus one n minus one x n n okay so this will be given okay so can you try to find the uh, can you try to find the answer okay can you try to find the answer uh, <clears throat> for this okay so can you try to find x n so the hint is given okay okay so can you try to find this Okay, anyway, I will, I will do it because uh, uh, <clears throat> there is no time. Okay, uh, so you can see that. Okay, uh, so uh, so so we are given a set transform. Okay, so first we have to find uh, this kind of. So this is a compact form. No, okay, this is a compact form. Okay, so first we should uh, we should uh, in order to perform the. Inverse is a transform. First, we can see 
whether we have get the power series expansion for this. Okay, so indeed we have and it is given. Okay, so we can use it. Okay, so if I uh, if I write this x is at in terms of this power series, I will get this kind of expression. No, n equal one to infinity. Only thing is uh, for this x, I have to apply this part. Okay, I have to substitute this part. Very simple. Okay, so I have minus one, n minus one. Instead of x, I have to use half. Z minus one, n divided by n. Okay. Okay. So this will be my expansion. Now, by looking at this, by looking at this, you should be able to find the Z transform, the X thing, okay? So if I write the X Z in terms of, in, from our definition, so it will be look like this, N equal minus infinity plus infinity, X N Z minus N. So very simple, simply you can find X N. What is X N? Actually, you, you no need to expand. This. You can directly say the X N. What is X N? Please tell me. You can directly say, uh, you can directly. What is X in actually? No, there are some other parts also. So you have to, you have to, you have to extract Z minus N. You have to extract Z minus N from here. Extract Z minus N. The other remaining is the XN. No? Compare it with this. Can you can you understand that? Could you all understand that? If I extract Z minus N, the other terms will be XN. No? Compare this and this. Compare this with this one. So if you extract Z minus N, there are some terms. Not only half. Okay, can anyone tell? Uh, you have to type it, no? I think it is hard to type actually this expression. Okay, I think you can understand. Okay, uh, so so here I have it. He said now I have to find this x n. No, okay. So this is the time uh, sequence. Okay. So here I have uh, this. Yeah, I think that one is the uh, that that is the answer. Okay, Visha. Okay. Uh, so uh, so you can see that here we have, uh, but very important. Here it is minus infinity plus infinity, but here it is one to infinity. Okay, one to infinity. Okay, so this uh, this will be minus. Uh, so I I will extract my z minus n like this. Okay, so uh, if I get the z minus n out, okay, so this will be z minus n. Okay, so if I if I multiply it by n simply, I will get the z minus n, and uh, in addition to z minus n, I will have these terms also. Minus 1, n minus 1, dot half n, okay, divided by n. Half n divided by n. So I also got these terms. So what is now? Compare these two. Okay. So this is z minus n, and this should be your xn. 
okay so xn will be xn will be okay 1 to infinity n from 1 to infinity 1 minus n minus 1 half n n okay so you can express this like this also okay express this like this half xn is equal to half n minus n half n divided by n this n should be greater than or equal to one okay but otherwise this will be zero because the limit from one to infinity okay so this is n should be one to infinity this terms we, you will come otherwise it will be zero if n is less than zero okay less than one no less than one it should be zero okay and also you can write it in terms of unit function okay so if i write this is it correct one minus half n divided by n u n is this correct or not can anyone tell is this correct or not please tell me is this correct or not if i put u in here is it correct or not please tell me yes it is wrong okay it is not correct no what is the actually what is the wrong with that if you put u in here if you put u in here that means this n from zero to infinity zero to infinity but you can see that here zero not included zero should be shifted not zero here so what what this should what this term should become can anyone tell it it should be a shifted impulse it, it should be a shifted step shifted step function yes so this will be wrong okay Ah uh, yeah, okay. So this will be n minus one half n divided by n u n minus one. It should be n minus one because the zero not included. N minus one, you have the zero also zero. You have shifted the pulse here. So so n minus one will start from here like this and goes up to infinity. Start at one and goes up to infinity. Okay. So this is your answer. Okay. So that is power series expansion. Okay. And uh, there is another method. Okay. There is another method. The second method to find the inverse uh, Fourier transform. Inverse Fourier. Sorry. Uh, inverse set transform. Okay. Inverse set transform. Um, that is we called. Partial fraction method. Partial fraction method. Can you remember how to find the partial fraction? Maybe uh, for your maths uh, exam, maths subject, you have learned this uh, how to find the partial fraction in a rational, in a rational function. No? Okay. So I think you have to uh, remember this theory, okay? Actually, I almost forget this, uh, uh, how to find the partial fraction, okay? So I will give you a, one example. This is a example three, okay? So uh, here that example is like this, okay? Z so is square plus Z minus one, okay? Z is at minus one okay so uh, can you find the partial fraction okay can, can, can you find the partial fraction method and try to uh, find the extent the time series one okay can someone tell me how to find the partial partial fraction here
I am asking from you. Actually, I couldn't remember that one. That is why I am asking. So anyone can remember, I can perform how to do it. Okay, with the help of him. Okay. So anyway, to find the functional fraction, I think uh, as I can remember, we have to get these terms as like this, A Z plus B Z minus one. Okay, I'm not sure this should be B Z, no? Because the, the here also we have Z square and here also we have Z square. So I have to get B Z or something. Am I right? Oh, maybe. I, I have to get uh, like this. He said plus A, he said, no, that is not correct. Huh? Can you remember, can anyone remember how to, how to find the parcel fraction here? Anyway, when you find the partial fraction and if you get the answer, you will get this kind of one. So, so how I know this? Okay, I'm sure that if you solve this using the partial fraction, you will get this kind of two terms. He said divided by Z minus one, one divided by Z, okay. So actually I just, I just to get the, so I just first think about this and I just get this equal, okay, because I can get the common <clears throat> denominator. He said, then here we have said this square, he said minus one. Okay. So this will be, yeah, plus he said minus one, like this. Okay. So I just uh, use this, I, I just get this like this, okay? I can't remember how to find the partial fraction. Okay. Yeah, I also hope, but I try to do it, I can't get the answer, okay? I think I, it is okay, okay? It is okay. I think you, uh, you may have remembered, okay? Because actually many years I didn't do this uh, mathematics things, okay? So, uh, so if, uh, so there, here, so you, if, if, so you can say that the order of this function and order of this function are same, okay? If order of this function is uh, less than this, okay? For example, if you have Z minus one here, uh, you can use this one A by Z divided by B Z minus one, okay? Uh, then you can uh, get the A Z minus one plus B Z, then you can equal this to one like this. Then substituting some value here, zero, one, two, then you can get two equation and you can solve A and B, no issue, okay? But uh, I think uh, in this session, we can't get the partial fraction like this, okay? Partial fraction like this. Uh, we have, because if we get like that, we have only, uh, uh, only uh, one value like this, B, he said minus one, he said this square plus he said minus. So here, no any he said this square, we, we, we didn't get any he said this square term here. I think, uh, I think so we are wrong, okay? Okay, anyway. Uh, anyway, uh, once, uh, so you can get the help from your maths teacher or you can refer your uh, old notes, math notes. And if you find the partial fraction here, definitely you will get this one. He said, he said minus one plus one by Z. Then can you find the Z transform? For this, can you find the Z transform for this? <laughs> what is the Z transform for this?
Okay, I will do this, okay? Because we are running out of time. Actually, uh, here also we have to use the, uh, again, we have to use the power series expansion, okay? So X is at this equal to, so you can divide it, this is at, and this is at, and here also is it. So you will get one plus one by Z plus half is it, okay? So can you tell me what, this is half is it. So can you tell me what is this, what is, the uh, what is the in inverse is a transform for this can you remember what is this so for this one if you compare it with this okay if you compare it with this okay compared it with this, uh, the first one, okay? So you will have, you have one by half is at minus n. So you will get half n u n. Sorry, this one is half n, not half n u n, okay? So, so you will have this kind of one, one minus half, is it okay? Then you will have half n u n. Okay. Now you have one one minus one by is it? Okay. So what is x here? So this is x for this case, and here x is only one by is it? Okay. So you will get definitely one n u n. Okay. So is there any value for this one? Are there any any uh, any uh, value for this one? Eh? So this will be zero to infinity. If you if, you, if this is zero, one zero, one to the power zero will be one, one square one, one to the power third, one to the power three, one to the power all one. So this will be ignored. Okay. So for this you will get u n. Okay. Did you get it? Okay. And I, I think we have already found this one. Okay. So this is u n actually. This is u n. And what is this? Okay. What is this? What is this? So here uh, you can see that you can see that we will have z minus one. Okay. If you get this out, z minus one. Okay. So if you get the uh, expansion, the z, if you get the z transform expansion, Okay, formal is a transform expansion, not inverse. Okay, you will get n minus infinity plus infinity. X n is at minus n. Okay, okay. So here you have only one term. Is at minus n. Is at minus n means wh what is this? So here you have is at minus n. So this will be your n. No, so n will be one. So n will be one. So only one term here. So what is this? This will be like this, no? At one, only one is there. So what is this? What is this? This is a shifted delta function, no? Delta n minus one. Okay. So this is the answer. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Delta. So this will be the answer. Okay. Okay. Uh, so <clears throat> actually there are some uh, more example uh, in your uh, in your note okay solved example uh, so try to try to evaluate those example by yourself okay uh, actually if you can't find the parcel fraction if you can't find the parcel fraction here if you forgot the way okay I think it, it, it will not be a much issue because here we are not going to measure your partial fraction knowledge. Okay. We need to we need to evaluate your signal knowledge. Okay. To so that one, you have to use the partial fraction. Okay. So if you given this kind of question, most probably you will get the hint. Okay. Most probably you will get the hint how to find the partial fraction for this kind of uh, expression. Okay for this kind of uh, ratio or rational function, okay? 
so no need to worry about that okay so i think we have done uh, the fourier in uh, the finding the fourier inverse part also okay now i think we can evaluate okay now we can evaluate or we can uh, we can apply okay now i hope we can apply uh, is a transform to analyze a lti system okay now we are we are now i hope we are in this position okay we can uh, apply is a transform techniques okay to analyze the system okay. analyze the system so we will move to this part also okay so simply if i get uh, like this okay say that uh, you have a system you have a system okay you have a system and the impulse response hn will be okay let's say it will be uh, delta n minus r okay so this is the impulse response okay delta n minus 1 okay so what is the exactly if you are given the impulse it is shifted okay so it is delayed it is delayed then you will get output okay so this is some uh, some what like a phase shift okay so for a phase shift phase shifter is also a system okay so there are many phase shifters okay in rf uh, there are rf phase shifters uh, optical phase shifters okay there are many phase shifters and normally in phase shifter you are uh, you are introduce a delay to a signal it will uh, it will uh, cause a phase shift okay so this is just like a phase shifter so if you, uh, if, you uh, if you are given a signal here let's say that you are given uh, you are given um, we will we will get a small uh, simple one okay now you are given uh, This kind of signal u n minus u n minus one u n minus n minus three or something. Now you are asked to find the y n. You are asked to find the y. Okay. So can you try to do this? Can you try to do this? Okay, so this is a LTI system. Okay, this is a LTI system. Okay, so you know that. Okay, so I will, uh, I will, uh, I will uh, <clears throat> do this for you. Okay, <clears throat> so you know that this is a LTI system. This is a LTI system. So the input output relationship will be like this. Okay, yn is equal to xn on old hn. Okay, so this is your xn. This is x. Okay. Now you have to find the y. Okay. So uh, you can do this in the time domain. Okay. You can you can find the y n. So you are asked to find this y n. You can do this in the time domain also. No issue. Okay. So maybe uh, for this example, if you are going to evaluate it in time domain, it may be uh, easy. Okay. But for some cases, uh, if these uh, signals are very uh, complex. Uh, time domain analysis will be very uh, difficult okay so you have to you can use the set transforms instead of time time domain analysis okay so we will try to apply the set transform okay so we know that in set domain this uh, convolution y is set will become just a multiplication so you will get x n h n x is at x is okay so you have to find the multiplication 
okay so before that <clears throat> you have to convert this to a z transform okay so what is the z transform for this one it will be one by z okay delta n minus one it will be one by z okay we have done this okay now i think you can do this kind of one at times it will be one by z the roc will be uh, roc will be all the z plane no? roc will be all the z plane as i can get and what is this signal? So can anyone tell what is this signal? So you have U in here. U in is like this. So this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, like this. Okay. And you have U in minus 3. That means 1, 2, 3. <clears throat> this one. Okay. So you will have this one also. Okay. So if you subtract do signal, what happened? So this one, this one cancelled out and other all cancel out. You will be uh, having only these three impulse. Okay. So you will be having zero. Okay. One. And so this is zero, one, two. Zero, one, two. All are one. Okay. So if you get the set transform here, what is the answer? Is a transform here, what is the answer? So you will get <clears throat> is at zero this term. So here you will get plus is at minus one, and you will get here is at minus two. Okay, so this will be your is a transform for this signal, this section. Okay. <clears throat> so H is at you have one by is at X is at you have one one by is at one by z is square. Okay. So now, now you can find y is it? How to find y is it? You can just multiply these terms. One by z plus one by z is square. Okay. So when we multiply by what we get, what we get, we will get, <clears throat> you, are, you can just multiply. You, you can get one by z plus one by z square plus one by is at third okay and you get y is at is equal to is at minus one plus is at minus two plus is at minus three okay so what is the answer x in and then you want it what is the x in what is the x in Quickly tell me. So this will be your n value. One, two, three. What is the extent? I need the answer. Please tell me. Is the answer so this is very simple what is the answer xn oh, sorry yn why yn sorry i'm sorry why yn what is the why yn what will be the why yn yes 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 no uh -huh. no no that is not why. Yeah? What is that? So you can see that. So here n is equal to one, n is equal to two, n is equal to three. So this will be x one, this will be x two, and this will be x three. All are equal to one. Okay. So you will have. Okay. You will have. Uh, at zero, you will have zero. Okay, no value at zero, you will have zero. Okay, and you will have one at two, you will have one at three, also, you will have one. So, this will be your signal. Okay, if I draw the signal, it is just like what? Okay, 
So if I draw the signal, okay, if I draw the signal, it is like this, zero, no point, one, I get the function pulse, second, I get the pulse, and third point, I get the pulse, M. okay? So this will be Y, M. what is our input signal? Our input signal will be Xn, okay, Xn, that is uh, zero, one, two, okay? So can you see a relationship between this? What happened? When you see, when you put the input, okay, Xn, okay, it is just shifted by one because this is a phase shift delayed. So delayed happened. So you will get Xn minus one as the uh, output, okay? So this is equal to Xn minus one, no? Your pulse is shifted by one here, okay? So that is why it is a phase shift, okay? Delayed, can you understand? So actually for this kind of question, you no need to go through a Z transform technique. You can just, uh, you can save it by looking at the system, okay? So here, if you are, if you are, so this is HN means, if you are given a delta N, what is happened to output? What is we get the output? So delta N is shifted by one, okay? So this will be our response. Okay, so if you if you send any signal, okay, it also shifted by one. Okay, so for this kind of system, we no need to use the Z transform. Okay, but uh, for a complex, uh, if you have a complex uh, com uh, impulse response, sometimes uh, it is uh, easy to use the Z transform and find the. Uh, response find the output signal of the system okay so did you get this can you can you see the use of is transform how we can use to uh, use the set transform to analyze the system okay actually we are, we are, we are using the set transform not only to analyze the output okay sometime we use this to uh, find our impulse response also. For example, okay, for example, if you are given, you don't know the impulse, okay, so you are given a signal, you are given a known signal here, and you observe the output, okay, observe the output, and you see what, what happened to this, okay, you observe what is happened to this, so you have Xn, you have Yn, Okay. Okay. So now you want to find this exchain. How to find that? So you know that y is at is equal to x is at h is at. Okay. And if you find the h is at using that using inverse is at transform, you can find the chain. No? Okay. So what is h is at actually? H is at is equal to y is at divided by x is at. Now in this case, you know. Xn, that means you can find the XZ. And here you know the Yn, that means you can find the Yz. Then you can divide it. You get an uh, answer. Then what you have to do? You have to get the inverse Z transform of that uh, answer. Then you will get Hn, that is impulse response. So in many ways, we can use this Z transform to analyze the system, okay? So do, uh, did you have that idea? Okay, so do you have any problem? I will be here around uh, five minutes, okay? So if you have any problem up to this level, okay? You can ask. I think we have almost complete our content. Okay. Now we have to do some example actually. That is the only thing we have to do. Okay. I think we have all covered the session. Okay. So if you could do some example in your note, I think that is better. Okay. Okay. So do you have any issue? Okay, so 
I will be around here around 10 minutes. Okay. If you have any problem, you can ask. Otherwise, you can leave. Okay.